carnivores and spiderettes, Fiber Spider, back again with my second part of my crocheted cardigan tutorial. And so as you can see, I've been rather busy. Also, as you can see, like I said in the last video, that when you're using this yarn, they are not going to be symmetrical. So it's either going to be very fashionable or I'm going to look like a total 70s throwback. Time will tell. So, <laughs> What I have done, part the handheld camera action here. So what I have done is I knew from the get-go for me personally that I was going to need a total of 18 rounds per hexagon, okay? So what I did was on the 18th round, I stopped. I didn't go all the way around. I only did three of the six sides for each hexagon. Okay, and the reason why is because we're going to finish up the round by joining these two lovelies together um, so that we don't have to do any sewing. Now, as I explained before, this is really, really advantageous if you don't know the exact size that you're going for because it's a lot easier to undo the stitches this way than to undo stitches that you have literally sewn together. <laughs> and I'm trying to save you some grief here. So what you're going to need to do is, you know, figure out roughly the size that you're going for and stop once you, uh, you know, you're on your last round, only do three sides um, of the, you know, both hexes, and then we can actually crochet these together. Now, what we're going to be doing is, see, this is where I left off after doing three sides, and we're actually going to crochet along to about here or so, um, leaving five spaces open, five of these little spaces open at the top here, so that we will have a bit of a collar going on. Um, and then, also because <laughs> you need to get your head through the top, of course, so it's only going to be stitched across here, and then we're going to stop. Then, on the second one, what we're going to do is, see, I've got my yarn there, we're going to stitch across, again, leaving the same number of spaces open, but then we're going to continue along, and we're going to stitch these edges together all the way to the bottom, okay? And then, what we're going to do is basically end up with a very sort of makeshift vest, if you will. And from there, we add on all of the equal trimmel of the the hood and you know the uh, the lengthening of the sleeves. Also, do not be alarmed if your you know makeshift vest if it doesn't go down very far because we are going to add rows at the very bottom. Um, you know, we're going to do that in a future video. Right now, we're just going to attach this thing to itself so that we will have a more cohesive piece. So, without further ado, let's get started. Alrighty, so I'm in my little studio space now. And so, um, basically, as I showed you before, um, we have our first piece, and here is where I left off, and I have folded it already into my nice little L shape, and we are going to get started with crocheting this top edge to itself to close up the top. Alrighty, so um, this technique actually I go over as well um, for a granny square tutorial, um, and this technique of crocheting together as you are creating the pattern itself, I have found to be priceless because I, many years ago, did a granny square blanket and I did not know about the technique. This was pre-YouTube days. Yes, folks. And as a result, I had to actually sew them all together by hand and it drove me crazy sewing in all those ends. So, this is a lot easier. 
All right, so at any rate, um, I've reached the corner, okay? Now, what you're gonna wanna do is, um, since in the corners we do a chain three, but we need to do a slip stitch into the pre-existing corner there on the other side. So what we're gonna do is after we do our initial cluster of three, you only chain one, and then, do do do, grabbing your other piece there, we're gonna do a slip stitch into the other half. Just do a slip stitch. So we're connecting the two together. Then you do a chain one. So the equivalent is still chain three. Okay, then we're going to finish doing our second cluster into the corner. So that's three double crochets. Okay. And then we are not going to chain one. No, no. We are going to do a slip stitch into the previous work that we did. So basically I think to clarify um, I'm gonna call this the 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 front row and this is like the back row okay so <laughs> we're going to after doing these three doubles we're going to do a slip stitch into the back row like that then do three doubles into the next chain space there in the front row. Like that. Then into the back row, we do a slip stitch. And then into the front row, in the next chain one space, we do three doubles. And then into the back row, we do a slip stitch. And then into the front row, the next chain one space, do three more doubles. Oops, if I can manage it. There we are. And then into the back row, we do another slip stitch. And let's just pull back here for just a second. And let me show you. It's all connected. Beautiful. We have a really nice clean edge going on here, which we're gonna build the sleeve out from. And we have our slip stitched edge. So it's really nice and clean. Now, what I did notice when I first made this is that, yes, when you're stitching this together like this, it creates a bit of a ridge, and I really wasn't happy with that, not at all. So actually, what if you, you know, if you turn this whole thing inside out after it is all connected, it sort of dimples in just a little bit and you really don't see it, which I absolutely love. So do not worry. <laughs> this, you know, seemingly the outside, no, actually this is gonna be the inside. So do not worry about that. You know, fret not, my dears, fret not. All right, and then basically we're just gonna keep doing as we've been doing um, all the way across to the other side here. So I'm gonna pull out some yarn and we will continue right along. All right, so I ended before by doing a slip stitch into the back. So, therefore, into the front, we're going to have to do three double crochets. And then into the back, we need to do a slip stitch into that space. 
and then into the front, we need to do three doubles. And you are not chaining one at any given time. You know, just going back and forth between doing three doubles and a slip stitch, back and forth between the back and the front. So I did my three doubles. So then we have to go into the back with a slip stitch. And then we go into the front with three doubles. Oops. All right, let me just scooch my piece a little to the side here. And continue right along. All right, so I did my three doubles. Then we go into the back with a slip stitch. And then into the front with three doubles. and then into the back with a slip stitch, and then into the front with three doubles, how's this for repetitious, huh? <laughs> <laughs> then into the back with a slip stitch, and then into the front with three doubles, But in case if you guys haven't been following my videos for very long, I am a freak for granny style projects. I love the repetition and the simplicity. All right, so I did my three doubles. So we go into the back with a slip stitch. And then we go into the front with three doubles. And I think we're almost there actually. All right, let's, let's take a quick look-see. How far along are we? Because I'm gonna want, personally, to leave five spaces open. So we've got one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, see, so we're almost there. Now, this number is fairly arbitrary. You can do however many you want to. Um, just keep in mind that you, know, you are going to need room for your head. And of course, this is going to be half of the, uh, you know, the opening, figuratively speaking. Um, plus, also, it makes, you know, nice collar lapel room going on. But we'll, we'll get there. So we're just going to keep moseying along. So going to now, because I did my three doubles, so we have to go into the back with a slip stitch. And then into the front with three doubles. And okay, we gotta go in once more. So going into the back with a slip stitch and then into the front with three doubles. Okay, now I think we're just about there. It never hurts to double check yourself. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so I've got five spaces open in the front. And one, two, three, four, five. Okay, I've got six spaces open at the back, which means I just did my three doubles, which means I have to go into the back once, 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 once more with the slip stitch. Okay, there we are, and that is actually it as far as joining the top here, okay? <clears throat> so we've got one, two, three, four, five spaces, and one, two, three, four, five spaces. Okay, so now instead of going back, forth, back, forth, back, forth, we're just going to focus on the front, okay? 
for the rest of this particular hexagon. No more back forth action. So we just did our slip stitch. So now, and don't do a chain just yet. No, no, no. Um, we just did our slip stitch. So we're immediately going to go into that next chain one space with three doubles. And now we're going to chain one and go into the next chain one space. Again, this is only on the front, okay? We're going to do our three doubles. Chain one, three doubles into the next chain one space. Big surprise, right? <laughs> All right. Chain one and three doubles into that chain one space. Okay. Chain one and we reached the corner here. So it's going to be three doubles, three chains, three doubles. Okay. So that, that is the end of what we're going to do to this particular hexagon here, okay? So we have an even number of spaces. You know, it's, it's completely even at the top here. Now, of course, I'm going to have to keep going down the, the length of this side. And, you know, so it's going to be, you know, all the way down this side and then all the way around until I reach my connecting point where I started. So that I am going to do off camera, so as to spare you the horror. <laughs> and um, going to show you how to do the next hexagon. Um, and like I said, that's going to consist of doing our connecting at the top here and also down the side here. So I'm going to do a bit of bun a bit of bunch, hmm. a bunch of work off camera, um, and I will show you what to do. Um, on the second hex, I am going to connect the top of the sleeve off camera, and I'll show you how to transition and do down the length. Okay, I'll be right back, and uh, we'll get to it. All right, my dear, so I did a bit of work off camera. And uh, so this hex here, this is the one that I finished up. And uh, so as you can see, this is where we joined up here. And this is going to be the opening. And so we're actually going to be stitching the, the top here to our second hex. Now for the second hex, I went along and I did all of the stitching along the top, just like I did for this one. And I, again, I left five open spaces up at the top. Yeah, well, this one isn't quite done yet because, well, we have to go down this way, but I did it the exact same way. Okay. So basically just do what I did on this one for this one, and you'll be good. Now, we're now going to join this one to this one, and I'm gonna show you how, and it is really a breeze. It's it's really quite easy. Um, and uh, so I'm gonna get myself a little situated, and we're gonna do the final connecting. All right, so as I explained before, you know, I stitched along the top, and as in the first example, one, two, 
three, four, five open spaces not connected. And we're going to create the fifth open space on this side. So I already did five clusters, and so that only leaves us with four actual spaces. So we're going to create the fifth space, and so I did, as you can plainly see, I did my one cluster. Now, in order to do the second cluster, we have to connect. So grabbing my other piece, and this is the top edge. Now, if you'll excuse me, this is a little tricky for me to actually film this, but I'm going to do the best I can. So, basically, what it amounts to is taking these two edges and holding them together, just like we did with the sleeve, okay? And again, it's going to be the front, the back, the front, the back, etc., etc., okay? You know. So instead of connecting one piece to itself, we're going to be connecting one piece to the other. So on the one piece, we already did our cluster of three, so we're going to chain one, and then we are going to slip stitch into the back piece. Oops. Going through and slip stitch and then do another chain and then into the front do three doubles and then into the back go into the next available chain one space with a slip stitch and then into the front again no chain stitches this is the exact same joining method as we did for the sleeves so we did our slip stitch into the back so then into the front into the next available chain space we do three doubles and then into the back we do a slip stitch and then into the front we do three doubles Oops. and then into the back another slip stitch and this is really how you're going to continue along for the rest of this joining all the way until you reach the very bottom. So it's really as easy as that. So I'm going to do just a couple more just for, as I always say, stuff and giggles. So we did the slip stitch and then into the front we do three doubles. And then into the back, we do a slip stitch. And then into the front, you do three doubles. Now, of course, yes, you could always crochet with a single crochet these pieces together. I have no objections. This is merely how I choose to do it. Um, I think it creates a really nice look. Also, when you're crocheting a single crochet, through your edges, for instance, you know, say you're connecting, you know, the top to, you know, the front to the back, you know, you'd go in through one double crochet into the uh, corresponding double crochet in the back, and you would, you know, single crochet them together, you know, like so. Yes, by all means, you can do that. However, it creates a really massive ridge 
along the top here. And the way I've done it here, it's a lot less, uh, I don't want to say invasive, but a lot less obvious. All right, so I did my three doubles, and then I do a slip stitch into the back. You know, ultimately, as I usually say with most of my tutorials, whatever works for you, because you are the one who needs to be happy with your project, not me, you. I'm just happy if you enjoy doing this, and if you've learned something, that's what makes me happy. You know, I'm here for you guys. And then into the back. And then into the front with three doubles. This is so easy. I love this. And of course, this is a lot easier to go back and frog and undo if necessary. Preferably not, but yes, if necessary. It's This is a lot easier to undo as opposed to um, undoing stitches that you've put in, literally sewn in with your yarn needle. Um, so if you're not happy with the size of this initial sort of, like I said, vest piece, um, you can undo it and, you know, try again with perhaps a another round to make it a little bit bigger. Keep in mind that uh, this vest is going to stretch a little um, because of the nature of the fabric. Uh, plus, we are going to add more to this piece. So keep that in mind, okay? You know, this, this is basically um, the foundation of our garment here. And I realize perfectly well that this is not an exact science. That's why I call this tutorial more of a formula as opposed to an actual pattern. You know, by no means do I wish to mislead any of you. You know, this is sort of a guideline that I'm giving you guys, and I hope beyond all hopes that it does help you. All right, and we are almost to the end, actually. We don't have many more of these to go. Um, also, I would love to thank you right now for all of the extremely, overwhelmingly lovely and warm feedback that I've already gotten from part one of this series. You guys are so awesome. I love you guys. And I, I couldn't be more pleased with the response that I got already, and it's only been a day. <laughs> um, I, I was just so taken aback, and uh, I am absolutely delighted. Also, I would love so very much to see what you guys are working on, and you can post pictures of your work on my Facebook community page, you can share on Instagram, under Facebook, as well as on Instagram, I am also Fiber Spider. So I would love to see what you guys are working on, by all means. That would delight me. And um, if you post pictures on my Facebook community page, um, and if you would like... I could showcase some of your work, just like I did with my kaleidoscope granny blanket crochet along that I had done a while back. Um, I showcased some of your awesome, awesome work because you guys are incredible and your color choices never ceased to amaze me in such a good way. So that is something that I think would be awesome so that you guys can share what you've done because we are a stitching and crafting community. And I mean, I'm, I'm doing what I am presently doing, um, but you guys have insights and color choices and design choices that I may not show 
So, that being said, I think that it would be a great way for all of us to see each other's work. You know, let me know what you think in the comments down below. Definitely. All right, so we are just about at the end here. All right, so... Doo -doo -doo. All right, and I'm going into this last space here. Oops, I did a chain one, didn't I? Silly me. No chains, not yet. Okay, going into the back. And then into the front with our three doubles as I have been doing. All right, now, <clears throat> because we have reached the corner, we still need to attach to the back corner. So that being said, we chain one, we do a slip stitch, and then we chain one again, and then turning our work, see this is the back, now, don't keep crocheting these together. No, no, no. Once you've reached the bottom, you are strictly working on just the one hex. So I did that chain one. Yes, okay. And then just going into the one front one, you know, because you're not connecting them anymore at this point. All right, and... I will show you what I am talking about. Just give me one more moment. Patience is a virtue, my dears. Be, be virtuous. All right. And here we go. Oh, seriously. Okay, so. Ta-da! Okay, and now I'm going to flip this around so you can actually see what it is that I am talking about. And, you know what, moreover, I'm going to turn it inside out to really show you. Because this is, for lack of a better word, fabulous. So happy already. All right, so now, check this out. Okay, do to do, do. Do, 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 do. All right, so the basic vest shape is now complete. And let me show you. All right, so now if you look at the top of the sleeves, whoa, excuse me, I'm sorry. If you look at the top of the sleeves where I did the joining right up here, perfect. Well, I won't say perfect, I'll say excellent. Um, but, uh, you know, completely lovely, no ridges. You know, if anything, there's a slight depression to it, but it works so beautifully. And then where we connected, see, there is... There is a bit of a ridge, but this is going to be on the inside, so no big deal, right? So then if you flip it over, like so, to the back, this here, I am sorry for my camera work, really, this is all handheld. All right, so on the back, this right here is where it's joined. Isn't that lovely? I love it. Do you love it? I love it. So listen, I really hope that this helps again to clarify some of what I've been talking about. And um, also, I strongly suggest that when trying this on for yourself, to wear, if you can, a long sleeve shirt so that it will fit as it will fit when you are wearing perhaps a long sleeve shirt underneath, and you will be able to determine the size that you are going to need. So you may need to try this on, um, make some adjustments, you know, et cetera, et cetera, before you go on to the next step. But, you know, this, what we've done now, this is the bulk of the work, seriously. Um, 
you know, after this, it's practically gravy. Believe me, you know, this is, this is the hard part, figuring out the initial size. Um, you know, after this, basically we're just adding stuff on and it's really not that bad. So listen, I really, really, really hope that you have found this series enjoyable because I'm having so much fun doing this. And uh, if you like what I'm doing here, please hit the like button. Um, your support means so very much to me because it lets me know that I'm on the right track and I need, I need to know these things, you know. Um, if you have any questions, comments, suggestions, what have you, please do so in the comments section down below. And if you haven't done so already, please hit the subscribe button because I try to post my videos and fresh material as often as I can because I love it so much and I love you guys. So listen, until the next video, I want you guys to stay inspired, stay caffeinated, and above all, stay stitching. I love you guys and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.